right, so that moves us to top five now, T-Bone, as we previewed at the beginning of the episode, top five best public courses in the city of Houston. Really excited about this. I would say compared to what we did last week, talking about the private courses, which I'll put in the link in bio and then probably right here as well. We played all these courses more more often than not. So it's going to be really exciting to break this down. I've been looking forward to it. And I think the I would say public golf in Houston is good, not great. Those are my initial thoughts. Now, there's been a couple of courses that have been redone, such as Memorial Park and Gus Wortham, because uh, those are actually owned and operated by the city of Houston. But, you know, Houston's so spread out, kind of like the private clubs. A lot of them are out in the suburbs, but uh, I'm looking forward to this. It should be a good list. Yeah, this is this is my list. I'm the unofficial official public golf chairman of Thurinder Parpod, I would say. KJ was playing private courses for years, even when he wasn't a member. <laughs> uh, for way too long. Yeah, and I think you only play when you get an invite to a, a pub. Uh, private course so i'm out there i'm grinding hitting the the plastic range balls you know doing the dirty work scoping all the all the spots so um i need to have a good performance i, I lost the last one uh based off of the voter poll or viewer poll whatever you want to call it so looking to rebound here yes that's why you need to go follow us on our social media platforms at 300 par pod number three 300 par pod twitter and instagram T-Bone's been doing a great job of getting a poll out, reviewing our top five on Instagram. You can go vote on that. And um, yeah, we, it was as I predicted, it was close last week, but I, I pulled away with the victory. So shout out to all the Instagram voters out there. And we are officially tied two to two. Not the tiebreaker yet because we got a long way to go. We're going to be doing this for a long time with a bunch of very di various different topics. So also comment below with a topic that you would like for us to cover. Maybe next week we'll do top five Masters moments. I don't know. Just throwing that idea out there. But uh, we got some good ideas. So that being said, let's break it down. I went first last week. So T-Bone, you get the first overall pick. Who, What course is your number one public golf course in the city of Houston? Yeah. I think this is a no-brainer. Got to go Memorial Park, post-renovation, Houston Open. The practice facilities are pretty awesome. Part of the city. I, I love going there. Uh, the demand for tee times tells you how great the course is, which could also be maybe a, 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 a con of the course because they released it 6 a.m. two weeks before, so... You want to wake up 6 a.m. and book a tea time two weeks in advance. Be my guest. I mean, the whole city does it. I feel like I never get to play there, which sucks. But even just going to hit on the mats, I've run into Scotty T unplanned a few times, going to uh, Bex Prime, sitting out on the lawn. Great. It's it's a pretty good, pretty good experience. And then playing the course is even better. So got to be number one. Yeah. No brainer. Number one. The redesign was fantastic, which was interesting because when we were learning how to, I mean, that's where I learned how to play golf. I'll, yeah. Them in the old Inwood Forest, if you remember Inwood Forest back in the day, I consider mm -hmm. those, that's where I learned how to play golf. So definitely have a high affection for it. But during that time in like the late 90s, early aughts, it was almost kind of a punchline. Memorial Park was fine. It wasn't great, but they would always get it ready for the city championship when it was still being held there. But uh, I would nobody was like, oh, I'm going to go play Memorial. I was like, oh, I, I just went and played. I, I feel like Memorial used to be so expensive and mediocre, and now it's amazing and super affordable. It's so true. That's well said. And I almost wish it was more expensive so less people would play, but that's really my only knock on the course. You just can't play it. The, the tee times are so hard to get, but – uh, I also remember you always telling me about this Memorial Park, about Memorial Park, which I thought was hilarious, but <laughs> the course was insanely strict with carts and you could drive there as a 16 year old, but you couldn't take a cart. So you had to be 18. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> and it was like, are you kidding wow. me? Am I allowed to take a push cart? Like, do I need to <laughs> be 18 for that too? So. 
that was a, another knock in the past. But yeah, overall, Memorial Park is the best. Um, I will say there are some some holes that I kind of miss. Mm-hmm. I, I it's still taking some getting used to with the redesign, but overall, it's awesome. I love it, and uh, the fact that the Houston opens there, you know, I think it just shows. So yeah, that's my number one pick. It's a great pick, very very deserving. Uh, for my first pick, I'm going to go with the Golf Club of Houston, the tournament course, the former home of the Houston Open, or rather the Shell Houston Open, RIP Shell Houston Open. Now just Houston Open operated by the Houston Astros, but it's uh, definitely a bit more on the expensive side of of uh, golf courses or the public range. It's probably one of the most expensive public courses in town. But uh, with it being the it, like that golf course was built to host a PJ Tour tournament, and my knock on a on it for a while was that you know they revolved the course like grounds, punching all that stuff. They didn't care about the course throughout the year because a people are still going to play it. And so the course was not in great condition most of the time because they were focused on getting it ready that one week of the year. Now that the tournament's not there, I think it's in better condition all year round. And I went and played out there this last fall, and it was just it was a great experience, good time. It's a very challenging testing golf courses. Golf course we played it a lot in junior golf too, and it's a it's a good. It's one of my favorites in town. I kind of forget about it sometimes, but whenever I do, I'm like, man, this course is awesome. So that's why it's my first pick. Yeah, it's a great pick. The uh, I think it's one of the best semi-private golf clubs. The member course is great. The, the public course is great. And <laughs> the last time I played it, I was with these, I guess you could call them golf hardos that were in town for a golf trip. Okay. And they wanted to play it tipped out, and it was a beast playing that course for the tips. But I, I loved the Houston Open out there. It was such a fun course, but it was really tough to walk, and getting out to Humble was, like, even worse. So, yeah, I'm happy it's close to the city. But, yeah, public golf courses in Houston, that's that should be top of the list. So, all right. Good pick there. All right. I wasn't really expecting you to take that. And I have my personal favorite. Okay. Number two. But I don't know if the. It better I not be I what sh- I think you might say. <laughs> if, no. I, I want to stick to my my guns and not think about the, the viewers. So, yeah, I got to go Gus Wortham number two. Um, it is one of my favorite courses to play. Um, it. Every time I go out there, I I look at the the grass, the greens, the tee boxes, and I'm just thinking this could be a private course. Um, it's in such good shape. Uh, the one thing that sucks, and I don't think I've ever played at Gus Wortham and not hit a ball onto the road or into the Fiesta Produce section, but uh, some of the most intimidating tee shots, back to back, oncoming traffic. I mean, I. I I donate uh, a Pro V to the Metro bus station there at yeah. once around. So <laughs> that, that two, three, four stretch is if you're a slicer of the golf ball. Whoo. Yeah. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. I actually never played it prior to the renovation. And I think that's probably for the best. Mm. So I think it was a goat track in a bad part of town. That's a great golf course in a probably not best part of town, but yeah. Gus number two. Yeah, man, if you would have told somebody that that would have been at least in the top three best public courses in Houston, even five <laughs> years ago, nobody would have believed you. They, they've done a, and I will give the city of Houston a lot of credit for revamping Memorial Park and Gus Wortham. They just built a new clubhouse out there. So uh, I think that's a great number two pick. If you weren't going to take it, then I was. Yeah. That makes and they me do feel a great better. job because I, I played the Houston Am out there a couple years ago. Unbelievable. They got yeah. that course ready. It was, especially since it's a par 72, some of the par fives are reachable. So they made those into par fours. Made the course really tough, actually. It was, yeah. I really enjoyed my experience out there. Yeah. Again, an, another knock, similar memorial. I mean, the tee times are just brutal. 
Yeah. So Gus is a little more. I don't even know if I want to tell people how to get tea times out here because, nope. it's, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. It's already ruined. So Memorial six a.m. two weeks in advance. Gus is midnight a week in advance. So that's a little more reasonable. Yeah. But the other day I was logged on at like twelve oh five. Tea times have been up for five minutes. And I think the earliest I could get was like 2.30 p.m. Wow. The following Saturday. So it kind of sucks. <laughs> so I love playing those <laughs> courses. But uh, a lot of times if you're not on it, the first minute or so, you're, you're screwed. But, yeah, Memorial Gus, I'm the municipal man to start off. So let's hear number two for, from Scotty T. Number two, which if you want to call a flag here, that's fine. I'm going to take Black Horse. Now, I, I'm. If you want to lump both in courses, no. or are you gonna make me choose? No, no. That's 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 uh, in terms of geography and both courses together. That counts as one. I think that's a great pick. It was one I, I was eyeing. So very solid yeah. pick. Both. I mean, they have the north and the south course there. Both very solid tracks. I think the south course is generally considered the tougher one. But you know, it's a great place to play scrambles. It's a great place to play individually. Big driving range. Um, it's, it's again, a challenging, fair golf course, generally in good condition. Um, it's pretty well run. So yeah, I think black horse is very well deserving in this two spot. Yeah. Black horse is great. Again, one of the, the more higher priced places to play, but it, it has a, it has some really cool holes. Like I always get the two eighteens mixed up, but the ones it's, it's kind of open and there's you know, a lot of undulation. It kind of wraps around like a, a big ravine. Um, mm. you've played it before. I hope you know what I'm talking about, but you yep. know, solid, solid number two pick. Thank you. Number three. All right. Probably pretty similar Two eighteens, solid course. I'm going to go Cypress wood. Um, Cypress is great. <laughs> traditions is even better. I think traditions is actually hosted Houston open qualifiers, Monday qualifiers before. Definitely. Just give you an idea of how good of a course that is. Um, I used to play in the in Scotty T's played in a, a handful of the, the scrambles out there, which are great if you like to play in eight and a half hours. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I love Cypress wood. Um, I think I, the name of the course couldn't be more fitting because you're just in the trees for every shot. Um, no house anywhere, no houses anywhere close. You're off the beaten path. It's very Jeez. quaint. If you haven't played Cypress Wood, uh, definitely go play uh, Cypress or Traditions. And I want to say it's a tea time and you can play all day if you want to play 36 like me. Yeah, I think technically you're not supposed to, but yeah, people don't really care. So yeah. yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, that Traditions course is very underrated in my opinion. Again, no homes. And even the Cypress course is great too. But yeah, Traditions. When they if they get the conditions right, the greens can be kind of iffy sometimes out there because again the tall tall trees blocks a lot of the sunlight can make the grass die on the greens. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's great, love it out there, love it. So you know, in my opinion, those are clear cut clear cut top five in Houston. After this, this is where it gets a little more nuanced. So I'm gonna bring one out here that you may not be expecting, T Bone. Number three for me, I'm going to go Meadowbrook Farms and Katie. Meadowbrook Farms is Greg Norman design. It's it's a really interesting golf course that it's pretty good for the common man. But in order to go low out there, you really got to be on. It's really tough. It's There's a bunch of marsh and big ditches and everything. Again, good driving range, nice amenities. And Meadowbrook Farms... It's one of those I always constantly forget about, too, because it's not... That was weird. nowhere on my radar. That was yeah. nowhere on my radar. But, dude, you go out there, you're going to be like, whoa, this is pretty nice. So, yeah, Meadowbrook Farms coming in hot, number three for me. Yeah, no, it's a great course. Wasn't even thinking about it. Uh, because the we talked about, like, Houston golf courses. I don't think we could really make a list on that. So, yeah, we got to branch out a little. And speaking right, of you're, branch... You're right. We should have specified Greater Houston area. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna test the limits with the Greater Houston area for this pick. 
Um, haven't played this since high school, and I don't know if I'll ever I'll, – I'll play it again, but it's just never on my radar. I never want to drive that far. But I'm going to go High Meadow Ranch. I think that's a super unique golf course. Wow. I think it's the only golf course I've ever played that has three six holes mm. bunched together, like the scorecards even bunched together like that. But they have some insanely – tough holes out there uh again you kind of feel like you're out it, there are you know some holes lined with homes but it is a very remote um feeling golf course very uh strong test of golf and uh that was kind of one i was thinking about you know frequent high school stops and i always enjoyed playing out there so i'll go high meadow ranch that course can be relentless actually if you are not on it is an absolute beatdown of a golf course. It is great. That's that wasn't on my radar. That's a really good pick. I remember his whole. It's either hole one or hole ten. It's right by the clubhouse, and there's a green that's like the most two tiered green I've ever seen. Mm. And I swear I would always hit it on whatever side the pin was not on. <laughs> Just auto three putt, auto three putt. So yeah, remember- we'll go. I remember High Meadow Ranch was the first 18 holes I walked in a golf tournament. I must have been like 13 or 12 or something like or I, I I don't remember, but it was like one of the first HGA 18 hole tournaments I played in. And that's a golf course where those holes are not close to each other in between. Mm-hmm. And I was dying. I remember yelling at my dad, how do people walk 18 <laughs> holes? This is awful. <laughs> yeah, there's some undulation out there. Well, few hills that's that's a tough one but great course great course yeah it sure is man that's that's a good one so for number well number four right already you're fourth you're fourth number four and this is what's tough in my opinion because a lot of it does revolve around how good of a condition the course is in public (laughs) courses are tough because they generally just get more play so it's harder to keep courses in nice condition or maybe don't have the funds as well to keep it up to date as it probably should. But when this course is in good condition, it is severely underrated. I'm going to go tour 18 mm. up in uh, up near Umble, near the golf club in Houston as well. But tour 18, it's it kind of sounds like what it says. It's an 18 hole course comprised of some of the most famous 18 holes in America. Maybe not just America. Is it the world? It's very recognizable holes. Like they have Amen Corner. They have 17 at TPC Sawgrass. They have uh, the church pews at Oakmont. So that's it's Mickey all- Mouse Hole. Yeah, the Mickey Mouse Hole. Um, when that course is in good shape, man, it is it is really fun to play, to experience those types of holes too. So yeah, 218 gets the nod for me at number four. Yeah. Every time I play it, it's in great shape. Mm. Um and I think there's there's some pretty realistic comparisons to the holes they're they're modeled after. So I yeah. love that pick. Love that pick. All right. To wrap up my top five, I'm gonna go with one that could lose me the draft because I don't think anyone really likes this course. I play it all the time. I don't know if I really like it. But I'm gonna go Wildcat. Oh man, <laughs> Wildcat! Wildcat right, number five. It's so the thing about Wildcat. If I ever have someone in town or someone's visiting, they're like, "Where should I play?" I'm like, go play Wildcat. Hmm. Play Wildcat Highlands. It's on a landfill. You get the cool view of NRG. True. Uh, super links. Super. Um, you know, hilly, different slopes, lies. But I will tell you, there's probably three holes on both of the 18s, two on Highlands, one on Lakes, and they're some of the worst designed holes I've ever played. I hate them, and it almost ruins the golf experience for me. But uh, the but overall, it's a fun course. It's reasonably priced. You can definitely get tee times, and uh, um, it's definitely unique. If I had to play it every day or as my home course, I'd, I'd kill myself. But um, I like Wildcat from time to time. And uh, 
definitely something I couldn't play every day, but uh, also good proximity to the city. So it's a Houston golf course. So that is true. See, in my opinion, I think it is severely overpriced. It, yeah. it's, it's over a hundred bucks to play before noon on a Saturday. Like, yeah. All due respect, the lot look, they're charging that much because they can get that much because they're like the unofficial golf course of all the Houston sports teams, Astros, Texans, Rockets. That that's you yeah, haven't played there in years, I'm sure. That's that's long gone. I think they're still technically there. Oh, but like, well, look, it used to be on like every flag. I'm not seeing JJ Watt at Wildcat. <laughs> Right. Uh, or Jose Altuve or any of those guys. Like I'm maybe, not Wildcat. Maybe uh oh, do you know who was out there? I had a buddy playing at Wildcat and he saw Deshaun Watson when he was suspended playing Wildcat. So Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just say no, he had a lot of time to play golf at that point. That's not that's not the partnership that Wildcat was looking for when they were ex- expecting all the athletes out there. But uh he probably hey. wasn't welcome on the private courses. That's why he was there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I will say too, I do have an affinity for Wildcat. It was the first course I broke eighty on. I think it was mine too. Yeah, I think it was my first course too. It was the Highlands. I broke par on the Highlands for the first time. So I do have an affinity for it in that regard. But I swear, every time I play there, I almost get hit with the golf ball. Because it's the only like link style course, and man, I every time, I there's a golf ball that rolls up by my feet because people can't yeah. see. Yeah, yeah, I almost got hammered last time. Um, I'm also, if it's ho- once a year, once a year round out there. If it's a hot summer day too, I mean, <laughs> you're getting roasted. Brutal, brutal. Yeah, yeah. All right, bring us home, Scotty T. Yeah, I don't hate. I don't hate Wildcat at number five. There, I think it is deserving. But if that would have been honorable mention, then I, I think that would have been appropriate as well. So for my number five, that gum, I might get some heat for this one. And I this think I know what be, you're going to pick. I think I know be, what you're going to pick. What? I think I know what you're going to pick. I don't know if you will. Oh man, I'm second guessing everything, but I'm just going to pull the trigger. I'm going to go Cinco Ranch. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say Sharpstown. No, absolutely not. No <laughs> chance. No chance. My dad almost got in a fight out there, actually. My dad's like the nicest guy in the world. So that's no chance. Uh, uh, yeah. Cinco Ranch. Uh, it's a good muni course, I would say. Solid. Again, you got to get the course in the right shape at the right time. T I don't know if you like it because that's where you lost and had to do the dress <laughs> round. <laughs> When Kyle's oh, in the boot, he'll beat you, even though you shot what seventy six or seventy seven, like yeah. So or was I it nine? Think... No, it was eighteen. Yeah, I broke eighty, and I was just like, "What the hell?" <laughs> um, but there, yeah, it's, there's it's, some good it's... holes out there that de- demand good shots, and but it's also a fair. There are some easy holes out there too, where you can, where you can go low. So yeah, yeah, I think Seeker Ranch. If it's going to be anywhere on the list, it's going to be number five. Yeah. Very mediocre in my book. I, I think of it as a suburban line, suburban area, neighborhood golf course. It's okay. Um, but it's a good layout. There's some fun holes. I think I think five is fitting. So yeah. Um that's that's pretty much all I had on my list. Uh I think a few we might have missed. Actually. I think one you, you could have maybe replaced in my book was I like Cypress Lakes a lot. Um, Ooh. Yeah. Touted. Which, they, they always had the tagline of the best greens in Houston at one point. Interesting. The last there's time I played there, it, was, it, was, it wasn't great. There's Granted, rumors I will say it was after the freeze in uh, 21. Okay. So everything was shot. Yeah. So gotcha. I got to take that with a grain of salt. There's rumors that they're turning that into a subdivision. So I, I don't know that. if that's true. That would be kind of a bummer. Um, and then if we really wanted to stretch the Houston limits, Eagle Point, I don't know if we could really consider that one, Mont Bellevue, but great yeah. course. Um, I'm more inclined to include High Meadow Ranch than uh, Eagle Point, even though Montgomery's probably just as far as Mont yeah. Bellevue. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, that's right on the limits. I don't know if it's worth mentioning. I don't know. That's that's a close one. Yep. Yeah. Well, we'll let it slide. Um, 
Courses I play a lot that I don't even think sniffed my top five are Herman and, and Jersey Meadows. I uh, feel kind of guilty not picking those, but you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm looking what else are we missed in Houston National? Houston National is probably number one on honorable mention, or it's in the it's definitely worth on honorable mention uh, on the list. Bay Forest down in the port is another one that is on most lists. I just I've never played there, so look, I'm not necessarily jump chomping at the bit to get down to the port. So, uh, Bay City. Let's see. This one has Wood Forest Golf Club. Down- down that way, one I always hear good things about is uh, the wilderness. Oh, I think it's in that. Yeah, I hear that one's always great. And then there's Lake Jackson's one... further than Mont Bellevue, though. Is it? Yeah. Okay. I feel like there's one. Oh, uh, is River Plantation, of course. Was that the one out in Sealy? They used to no, have like Stephen F. Austin. Okay. There was one that got destroyed by Harvey. Maybe it was out there. I don't know if this is what you're thinking of, but one that would maybe be number one on my list, River Ridge. River Ridge, yeah. On the way to Sealy. Great course. Yeah, that one's I gone. I played though, so right? many tournaments there, yeah. yeah. Actually, a few years ago, I was driving back from Austin, and I just was feeling sentimental, and I drove up to the to River Ridge, pulled up to the gate, and it's just weeds. And I was like, damn. Hate to see it. That's Hate how I feel it. driving past Bear Creek. Just a bunch <laughs> yeah. of field and weeds now. Dude, Bear Creek, the Masters course, used, it uh, hosted the Big 12 Championship at one point. Like Houston Open, too. And Houston Open, yes. And now it is a field. Yeah, it sucked. I mean, that, that place was so damn bad for so yeah. many years. I have no – I mean, Challenger was fun. Presidents, I think, is the worst golf course ever made. No bunkers, no water, just grass. Yeah. Straight, just, and then Masters was great, but always closed because of flooding, and then the flooding just continued to get out of hand. But yeah, right after they redid it. the clubhouse, too, Harvey just came <laughs> in and destroyed it. So, oops, I want to talk about sunk yeah. cost. Uh, yeah. Maybe another one, too, that we both didn't consider, Augusta Pines. Augusta Pines. Is that public? Uh, this, that's what this course that's what this list has okay, that should probably there. be top five you've never played there never played there no uh, it should definitely be top five if it's public that's like yeah. a big miss man we're gonna we're gonna hear that from Preston. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a big miss um there's probably some kingwood area woodland stuff we're missing um but is that houston area i guess but it's more Houston area than Montgomery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we might be in trouble. Yikes. Uh, but as we mentioned, there's outside of Sharpstown, Gus, and Memorial, a lot of these courses are out in the burbs. So um, maybe Quail Valley. I want to show Quail Valley some love, too. Hmm. They got El Dorado and um, what's the other one? La Quinta. La Quinta. That's right. Uh, yeah. 36 Souls out there recently redid. No, I guess it's not recently anymore, but – El Dorado that we did probably 15 years ago, and that's been pretty good. I so. caddied out there um, about last summer Okay, uh, for a buddy of mine playing the, I think it was a Texas Am or something qualifier. But, uh, yeah, it's we played a practice round out there, um, pretty solid. Um, I played Sienna Plantation about a year ago, and it's an absolute dog track. That's I mean, too bad. That, that was a good. Yeah. Tra- that was a good track at one point. Yeah, yeah, that's been rough. I think Southwick is pretty bad, um, or Battleground too. Battleground's really bad. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, it's interesting but, to see the ebbs and flows of golf courses because, as we mentioned, yeah. Moore Park probably wouldn't have been on the list at one point, or especially Gus, but Battleground <laughs> probably would have, and Southwick, yeah. obviously. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's interesting, but I, I think we did a pretty decent job. Again, maybe Augusta Pine should have been on that list. Um, we'll definitely double check or confirm after this that it is public. But let us know in the comments what we missed. We also got 
like Glenlock Pines. Oh, and under that same umbrella, there's the new Something Pines that just opened up out in the spring area. Um, yeah, so there's a new course called Highland Pines. Yeah. Uh, that's almost a little too new for me to consider. I did play it over Christmas. Really? And I did. I went out there with a friend of the pod, Dumpy, and man, that course was absolutely spectacular. Really? It was amazing. It was expensive, but it was amazing. I'll have to put that on the list. Definitely. I would highly recommend it. it. It's out there. I mean, it's past the airport, and it is, for us, maybe close to a 45-minute hour drive. But it is worth the price of admission, 100%. Yep.